everything is sound. When we think a sound goes out, it resonates the energy around us to that sound. And what you're about to see are some pictures that show this happening when sound is introduced and how sound takes random particles and turns it into astonishing form. And that's how this universe was created. In the beginning was the word, and the word was sound. So what you're looking at here is merely particles formed into patterns by sound. Um, they were all over the place to start with, just in random positions on the plate. As soon as the sound appears, they form into these patterns because um, everything is sound, and it is sound that turns uh, matter and energy into form. In 1995, Dr. Emoto Masaru was the first one to record musical impressions on water. In Dr. Emoto Masaru's laboratory, they allowed water to listen to music, after which they flash froze the water. And then, under the microscope, they could clearly see the crystals that the water had formed. Here is what the music of Bach looks like. Mozart, Beethoven, and it's really fascinating when you keep in mind that ninety percent of our bodies are water. Makes you wonder, doesn't it? If thoughts can do that to water, imagine what our thoughts can do to us. I began to investigate 528 by a divine revelation that was given to a Dr. Joseph Paleo back in 1997, along with the original musical scale, the original solfeggio. It was six notes by which the hymn to St. John the Baptist was sung that was known as the most spiritually uplifting hymn of all the ages. And the third note of that scale was Miracle Note, 528. So it was ut re mi fa so la, and the third note, mi, miragistorum in Latin, means miracles in English. It turned out that when we discovered the original musical scale, there was not just six, but a total of nine core creative frequencies to the universe. That is, everything in the universe is made from nine notes, only nine. And that the first six are the sofeggio, and then there's three additional ones that form a perfect circle of sound. Specific musical notations and progressions can give relaxing or exciting stimuli to the body without our knowledge. The music industry goes even further and uses natural rhythms of the heart to map out the tempo of pop songs. This is why 72 beats per minute is used very frequently in pop music. Music is not a product of culture. In 1986, the National Academy of Science found that infants prefer consonant sounds such as perfect fifths rather than dissonant ones. This is just a small example of our natural ability to understand sound. So be very careful when placing a child in front of a TV or near a stereo. Those who believe that children cannot comprehend violence on a TV screen or aggression from music are thinking strictly with the left brain. The child may not rationally understand the words or actions on the screen, but the right brain, even in infants, can absolutely understand everything in its immediate environment because it transmits a frequency that can affect us on a subatomic level. Science has even proven that proper sonic vibrations are essential for the health of our vegetation. Studies done on many ecosystems have shown that when a specific species becomes extinct or moves from an area, another species will replace its song patterns to fit the overall harmony of the vibrations required for plant life to thrive. Here you're seeing mini galaxies um, just formed by particles and sound. This is how the galaxies and the universe and the solar systems were formed and continue to be held in the structure they're in through sound. If the sound changes, 
the matter changes, the energy changes. To show that vibration is the very foundation of existence, Hans Jene developed what is known as cymatics in the 1940s to show that when vibrations of sound are passed through a form of media, there is a set pattern that will follow. When the frequency increases, the media develops into a more complex pattern. This is precisely what is happening to our Earth and to humanity. There are 64 possible codes of amino acids in our DNA structure made from four elements, carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, and nitrogen. By any means of logic, we should have all 64 codes activated within our DNA structure. Yet we presently only have 20 active codes. And of these 64 possibilities, it appears that only 20 of these codes are turned on right now for us, the 20 amino acids. Ron Sakely, department chairman, Chemistry, University of California, Berkeley, showed that DNA acts as an antenna for cellular upregulation. The primary function they taught us about what DNA is about, it's a receiver and transmitter of photons, light and phonon sound. For what? Cellular upregulation, meaning that they're water molecules, the pyramid power around the DNA spiral energizing strands are taking in the spiritual energy of love vibrations and then sending it out for manifesting, precipitating in a quantum field, the physical matter of the body. These are hertz frequencies or cycles per second that the musicians can retune their instruments to play and experiment with. Why? Again, these are the creator's musical scale, the original solfeggio buried for 3,000 years in the Bible. So the ancient priests who knew how to levitate the huge stones for the building of the pyramids and the Masonic knowledge that predated ancient Egypt, the ability to have this information, these frequencies serve the function of creation, destruction, and miracles on behalf of the empowered people who had access to this knowledge. So from that moment on, I began to think of 528 as something very special, but I had no clue whatsoever what it really was. I had no, no knowledge whatsoever about it being a love frequency, nor did I have any concept that it was the prophesied key to the house of David. So we have a choice that we can remain in dissonance or we could literally vibe to a new song. That's the fulfillment of the book of Revelation 14.1, where 144,000 people who hear this message, that they feel it in their hearts, and they make a choice to sing in a new key, a key of love.